Welcome everyone. I'll give you all a moment to get into the room. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. My name is Chelsea and I will be your NHB host today. Please note that today's session is being recorded and will be uploaded for on-demand viewing on NHB.org in the next few days. Seth, if you wouldn't mind hitting next on the slide. Please note this webinar is copyrighted by the National Association of Home Builders and is intended to provide complete and accurate information on the subject matter covered as of the time of publication. I'll give you a moment to review the copyright and disclaimer statement. I will now turn the presentation presentation over to today's speaker, Seth, take it away. All right, thanks, Chelsea. Uh, I'm Seth Hart. I'm an associate principal at DTJ Design out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, and I, my primary focus is on all things residential, community amenity, uh, just kind of community design. Uh, so what I'm here to do today is I'm gonna share some flexible design solutions that cater to a wide variety of uh, buyer types, buyer profiles, and really just talking about different ways to provide flexibility because I think as we all know, um, you know, we're, we're designing homes for not one particular buyer, but really for any particular buyer. So um, these are just some different design solutions that are meant to really provide a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to start with one that I think has really come back in a way um, since the pandemic, and that's this retreat space. Um, this one in particular is off a primary bedroom. Uh, this is something that usually we, we would kind of only provide on larger, more upscale homes, but I think they're finding their way back into smaller footprints, smaller square footage homes, um, because as we all live through the pandemic, you know, I think having a little private oasis to retreat to has become, a, you know, just a really nice thing to be able to have. Um, you, and then, you know, if everyone's stuck in the house together, which, you know, seems like we're going to keep getting away from this, but then it draws us back in. So, um, you know, seeing these spaces is really nice, uh, you know, just a highly sought after. And then also, as you look at the floor plans, the other thing you can do with this is, uh, you know, you can furnish this multiple ways. You could add a sliding glass door to this or a sliding glass panel door, uh, barn door, what have you, to make this a home office privatize this space or, you know, create that that uh, noise separation. So uh, once again, flexibility and not only providing that little sanctuary, but also as a potential for home office, just depending on how you furnish. Um, and then another interesting concept with this is this, uh, you know, this idea, this retreat space. This is a, a project that actually doesn't have a basement, which in Colorado is a little bit um, unique because that's typically the the bonus space here, right? Is everyone goes down to the basement? We've got you know you build those out with big living rooms, guest bedrooms, things like that. Well, this project is in Denver, but um, weren't going to provide those basements, and so we were looking for another alternative to create that same kind of flex space. Um, so what we did is actually on the floor plan, you can you can see that over the garage, that space is in the base level floor plan isn't utilized. So what we did for this is we provided a stair off the off the rear porch actually. And so it's, a, it's an outdoor staircase or a, a, you know, that you access from the out, outside. And that really privatizes this space. And you can use that as, as you're seeing in the image, this big retreat room with a wet bar, or you could add a full bathroom to this and make it a guest suite. You could use it as this almost private home office that's detached from the main house if you're, on, you know, if you're working from home, but you need that privacy and separation from everything else that's going on in the home. So once again, just trying to find interesting ways to create these interesting, you know, these little retreat spaces um, a little bit different than they, they've been done in the past, especially as we try to save building costs by not doing full build, you know, full foundations and, um, and anyway, and then also providing that base level plan at a little lesser build out and then being able to option these things up. Um, so, th you know, speaking of that home office, I think this is another fun design solution that was for a townhome actually. And as you look at the, the bottom floor plan in this image, in the base configuration for this home, it's just a big open room. And the image on the right has that, that little kind of tech space tucked in behind the stair. Otherwise, it's just a big living room space. It's all pretty open. 
um, and, and flows well, but the, you have a couple options for this as well. So in the image you see on the upper right, we actually provide a, a wall between you know the the, out, the where the, the office space is and the living room. So now we get our TV wall shrinks the the living room down and creates a little bit more of a formalized office that you can see in that upper right image. Or in this 3D model view that you're seeing, you can actually create two privatized offices here using things like glass lighting, pocket doors with transoms, even the transom window from one office to the interior office to really focus on bringing light into these spaces. They are really compact rooms. You can see the same, the, the layout for these on the upper floor plan. So while we're creating these interesting little pocket offices, really focusing on how do we make them not feel so cramped, um, so tight. You don't want your door swinging in there, just taking up more valuable square footage. Um, and then, you know, with these, we've got one bigger office that can really function as that dedicated home office or, and then the next office is a little bit smaller. It could be, you know, a take place for doing a homework station, doing Zoom classes, or even just that second secondary home office. So, you know, for a 1800 square foot townhouse plan, now we're providing multiple home office spaces. So once again, just that, that flexibility and the idea of really trying to be able to options uh, provide options in the floor plan that could cater, cater to someone who doesn't need the private office or someone that might need to, all within the same footprint. Um, and then even looking at little spaces like this, where this was a, a, a large home, we had this big back kitchen area flowing all, all the way to the mudroom space. And so this, we just utilized a small area of that back kitchen to provide this little tech desk. It's, it's open, it's you know very connected to the rest of the, the back kitchen and even flowing into the main kitchen. Uh, but still provides a nice usable space. And then I think there's even other options for this to slide that space up to the north end of the plan at the end. And once again, provide flexibility of uh, having a door, a glass door, so that you could make that a quieter space if you needed to take a, a meeting on that as well. And then another thing that has really started popping up a lot more recently is this idea of the accessory, dwell accessory dwelling units and how do we option those in uh, and, and more places. And I think that part of this is, um, you know, the idea of the being able to offer a bedroom suite for either in-laws, um, you know, growing children, things like that. But also is this, I, you know, as everything prices keep exploding, we're trying to find different ways for attainability. And this is something that we've seen as an interesting solution where you can offset some mortgage costs by providing this ADU as an option. This one, the standard base level condition, there is no space over that garage. And then you can option this on. And now a home buyer can buy this home, option that ADU, rent that space and kind of offset some of those mortgage costs. And this just tacks on over the garage. We had an exterior staircase as you see in the, the model views. And now you've got a nice, uh, you know, little, not even a one bedroom apartment, not even a studio that has its own direct access off the alley, kind of private and on the rear of the home. And then another way we've, we've kind of tackled this as well is this was another alley loaded product. Um, the, the floor plan on the left is that base level second floor. And then you can see on the middle image, we, on the ground floor, we actually tack on a third car garage and kind of enclose the courtyard on the lower level. And then we provide stairs from the courtyard that go up and create this office bedroom space over that third car garage. And so that functions really well for that dedicated home office or an in-law suite or a teen suite, you know, what, what have you. And it's it, the access is off that common space. Or we flip the access off the alley you make the third car garage walled off from the other two car garage and provide direct access from the third car to that stair. And now you come up and you've got this ADU unit. It's a studio apartment. We've got a stack washer and dryer in the bath, small little porch. So you do have a, at least a little bit of outdoor living. And now once again, we've, we've taken, a, you know, we've provided this base level plan that can cater to someone who's a little bit more budget conscious and then a couple different upgrades to, for lifestyle needs, right? So if you do want that home office or you want to offset your mortgage with that ADU space. And if, you know, these kinds of, kinds of things work really well if you're in an area that's close to light rail or public transit and, you know, it, it, it could be someone that, you know, trying to cater that lifestyle that get an independent uh, person living in that unit there. And then another way that we've started to kind of look at this as well, it's kind of similar, but slightly different is the idea of these multi-gen suites. So this home, we provided the floor plan on the left you're seeing, we provided this multi-gen suite on the ground floor. This is 
you know, if it, a lot more often now we've got kids graduating from college, coming back, living with parents, trying to save up money to buy a house with everything costing more and more, it becomes more of a viable solution. So this one, we've we created that multi-gen suite or even young families and they've got parents that live with them part time or full time helping to take care of the kids. So with this, what we really wanted to do was create a privatized entrance both at the front and off the garage for that multi-gen suite. So whoever is living there can really use that space as kind of an apartment attached to the main home. Yet we did also provide access by the office up front to really connect directly to the main home as well. And so now we've, we've got this really nice multi-gen suite on the ground floor, um, all the, the you know, primary bedroom and kids rooms, everything upstairs. And then we looked at this in a couple of different ways. We wanted to say, you know, how can we flex this plan for different buyers? Because not everyone's going to want this multi-gen suite on the first floor. It's kind of a specific buyer type. Um, so the middle floor plan you're seeing is actually taking that and making it a main floor primary bedroom suite. And I think that what's interesting about this, this could be a standard base level option that you would choose when you build the home, or it could even be a remodel that someone want, knowing that, you know, currently they might need the multi-gen suite, but as they grow older, they may want to age in place and convert this to a main level primary bedroom suite. So that was the idea behind that option. And then as you look to the plan on the right, this was actually privatizing that multi-gen suite, turning it into an ADU, walling that off from the primary home. And now we've got a dedicated entrance off the front and it's, you know, it's got laundry, it's got a little kitchen, living room, uh, bedroom forward and functions really well as this, uh, this ADU suite on that ground floor. And even looking at things like putting a, a thicker wall between the main living and that suite to provide extra sound barrier, um, and just paying attention to how that lives a little bit. And then as we get to this next slide, one of the interesting concepts with this idea as well is looking at how to create flexibility for outdoor living with the garage. So this, this unit has a dedicated garage space, but we open up the sidewall. You could look at adding barn doors or something if you wanted to be able to close that off. But the idea was you could park in there when you need to use that for parking. But if you don't have a car, you can park on the street that you really wanted to expand your outdoor living. Now that functions as a covered outdoor living space off of that, you know, instead of the garage space right off that ADU suite. So just a nice idea of creating flexibility again in outdoor living for this, this ADU. And then as we get into more outdoor living concepts, these were some, uh, some essentially detached townhomes. They function just like a townhome, but they're six feet apart. So, you know, the, the builder wanted to create a single family home, but um, really in the kind of constraints of, of more of a townhome environment. And then what was interesting with these, with the outdoor living is all of these decks are actually optional. So you can option the deck, you can option the covered, the, the covered roof over the deck. The end lots have side decks and front decks. And what was really nice about this is at the base condition, you know, it, you're not having to spend all that money up front. This was a price sensitive or, you know, targeting price sensitivity for this or attainability. And so you can keep that base price point low. You can option these decks and covers, and it really provides the buyer a lot of flexibility to upgrade how they see fit. But then what it also does is you go down this street scene, there's a lot of homes that select one, two, uncovered, covered, and now you're creating a lot of variety within the context of the community just by the different options that you're able to provide that change the elevations with that. So it creates a lot of interest just going down the street as well. And then that next area of outdoor living that is we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, options for now is, is roof decks on townhomes because townhomes are you know more and more uh, prevalent these days. So these townhomes option these upper roof deck areas with some outdoor living. We were actually lucky in this municipality that we we're able to provide some living at that fourth floor. Uh, but then also when you look at roof decks, the, the big issue with roof decks can be privacy. So with these, as you can see in the image on the right hand side, that's actually the stairwell for the unit next door that doubles as a privacy barrier from roof deck to roof deck. So when you do option these roof deck spaces, always think about how you can create privacy and some barrier between units. 
So this is just another example of, of townhomes with those optional roof decks. And as you look at the image on the left, you see how the far left unit is a four story, then the next unit's three story, the next unit's four, and the next unit's three. So providing those as options creates some really interesting um, patterns along the street scene when you start to look at the building and how it articulates itself when those are selected or not. Um, and then in the case of this, we use these interesting white parapet walls as a focal point on the elevations. But then when you look at the images on the right, they also become the privacy barrier from roof deck to roof deck. So when you're out in that space, while it makes it feel a little bit more confined, at least you've got that privacy. You're not looking right at your neighbor's roof or at your neighbor's roof deck. And then, uh, you know, another area to always be considering this flexibility is with even planning itself. So I'm going to show you a few examples. I'll walk through them quick. I know I'm running out of time, but this is four little cottage plans. It's all basically the same plan. And what we did is we looked at this with detached garages, a private yard between the garage and the unit, uh, and how that could start to lay out, create some different variety, some really handsome little cottage elevations. What that does to our density, we're looking at a, a, you know, a net density of about 13.3 DU per acre. And then we take the same exact plans, we move the garage forward, we reconfigure, now our, our depth for the lots changes, our width changes a little bit because attacking on the garage, I think we gave a little more buffer between units. And then we create this outdoor living next to the one car garage that could also double as a parking space if you need that two cars um, you know, per unit. So that now takes us to 14.7 DU per acre. And then finally, we looked at the same exact cottage plans, and now we slid the garage in between them, creating a townhome that really is just attached to the garage, so still creates good privacy unit to unit, have a full driveway apron off the alley, which gives us a nice private yard adjacent to that, and now we're up to 16.8 DU per acre. And finally, I'm just going to leave you with flexibility and curb appeal. This is just looking at a concept of taking a farmhouse, starting on the left with a traditional, this is all one floor plan, generally the same layout, but how you change details, materials, windows, trim, you know, window grids versus no grids to make that traditional more modern, and then pushing windows to corners, playing with materiality, um, keeping things simple, and just changing up detail to make that more contemporary. Now you've got three homes that could all work in one community together. They could cater to the traditional buyer to the contemporary buyer, or you provide flexibility in these to take it from one neighborhood to another, or if one community, you know, really prescribes a more modern, more urban kind of detailing, you have that on the right, or if you're in something that's more traditional, more familiar, you have that on the left, all within the same context of one floor plan. And then I know we're all familiar with that as a farmhouse. So this is just looking at it as another example of how we could do the same thing with craftsmen. It's the same idea of changing window patterns, changing detailing, changing materials and color to really bring that from traditional to contemporary. So that's what I got today for some design concepts for flexibility. So hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you. Seth, thank you so much for your presentation today. And as a reminder for folks still on the call, um, today's session was recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing at nahb.org in just a few days. You'll receive an email um, letting you know when it's available. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feedback, please send it to nahblearning at nahb.org. Also stick around after we end the event for a brief survey regarding today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day.